Mac minis have always been valuable as a base Mac. After the M1 chips, they completely became the best mini PCs. Even for those who did not intend to buy a mini computer, they were considered one of the main options. And now, in my opinion, regardless of one problem, the M4 Mac Mini is perhaps the most valuable electronic device of this year. This is M4 Mac Mini review, so let's do it all. The design is definitely the unbeatable part of this year's Mac Mini. A 5 inch by 5 inch cube, which means it's as long as a phone, a smaller than a tablet, and have less volume than a laptop. Windows PCs would have to be a quarter as powerful if they were to be that small, and they would have to be at least four times as big to get the same performance. This shows the high level of efficiency of the new chips, which is impressive. The aluminum body is semi-matte and of high quality, but it's not very resistant to a scratch. There is an Apple logo on top, two USB 3 ports on the front, and three Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back, with a speed of 40 gigabits per second. Support two Pro XDR displays. But Apple has put four Thunderbolt 5 ports, with a speed of 120 gigabits per second for the M4 Pro. This means that with a converter, you can connect three Pro XDR displays to one port. Use the rest of the ports for memory. High speed memory, of course. You also have an HDMI 2.1 port, a high definition combo jack, and an Ethernet port. But Apple charges you $100 more for faster Ethernet. Like previous Mac minis, there is no SD card. The cooling fan is located under the device, and it makes hardly any noise in normal use. And it's not at all distracting during heavy use. I suggest you don't put it in a closed place. Of course, who hides the Apple logo? But the most masterful part of the design is the power button on the bottom of the device. I think it's the most artistic mess you can put in a perfectly designed device. It's the nightmare of people like me who shut down their PCs. The speaker is built in and as expected, it has good quality and volume. But I think a speaker or headphone is definitely worth it. In terms of connectivity, it's not exactly up to date. Bluetooth 5.3 with Wi-Fi 6E, which is acceptable. I'll take a little about macOS. As always, it has great compatibility with other Apple devices. It's user-friendly, simple, and smooth. It's not yet suitable for gamers, but good games are being released for it, and it will entertain you. Engineering softwares are not yet compatible with it, and the performance drop with simulators are so great that you shouldn't think much about Mac. Regarding AI, it's nothing special right now, but the beta versions shows that it's a little weaker than Copilot Plus, but it has better features due to its compatibility with other Apple devices. On the other hand, it has an extremely powerful 38 teraflops NPU, which performs most of the processing within the system, but requires the internet. This NPU is also very useful in graphic works, especially video editing. We've come to the important part. I'm comparing the M4 here with the M3 to make it more tangible and with Core Ultra 7 Gen 2 that Intel has released to compete with the same chip. First of all, the Mac Mini 2024 finally comes with a base 16GB of RAM. And finally, at a price of $600, it's a very good value. Its speed is also 17% improvement over the previous generation, and is now 120 gigabits per second. Of course, this speed is just a good number for ARM architecture, it's not what you might think. But the point is, it's not upgradable, and for each higher configuration, you have to spend $200 more, which is not economical at all. Also, the base version is a still 256 gigabytes, which of course can be partially covered by Thunderbolt. The M4 chip has 10 CPU cores and 10 GPU cores. Let's dive into the numbers a little more. In terms of single core, the M4 is currently the best. In Geekbench 6, it is 28% faster than M3 and 20% faster than Intel. But in Cinebench, the difference is less. In the multi-core section, Intel is 44% faster in Geekbench 
and more than two times faster in Cinebench. Of course, this comparison does not exist in reality because I am actually reviewing in the world of laptops because I feel it is closer. In terms of GPU performance, Apple has made a 16% generational improvement. But if we compare it to the 3050 graphics, uh, it is 8% weaker. And if we consider the total package, Nvidia graphics are better overall. But what do these numbers mean in reality? If you are a graphic designer, you edit light 4K video, do 3D design, do everyday work and it is not super heavy, the M4 works extremely smoothly. And uh, if you feel that you need more power, the M4 Pro is also great for $1300. It's literally a workstation at the size of a, a small book. I think it's one of Apple's best products in recent years. And I loved it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, like it. And if you like my content, subscribe to my channel. Goodbye, see you next video.